TIFU by borrowing my wife's laptop and finding her Reddit account. As the title suggests I borrowed my wife's laptop for a presentation because it had a full size HDMI port and my Chromebook does not. And let's face it the pink case brings out my eyes. I open it up and Chrome is open on Reddit with her signed in. I know IATA here but I was curious and honestly hoping to find some nudes that we could use later. To try and spice things up. Idiot. A little backstory. I am an individual with serious mental health challenges and lately my depression has gotten the better of me and was sucking the life out of my wife. She has told me as much. I never thought I would be winning husband of the year awards but I genuinely love my wife and would do anything for her. I'm probably letting myself of too easy. Anyways in December my wife tells me that she can't handle it anymore and I need to get my stuff together or we're done. I have given every effort possible since then. Multiple counseling sessions a week. Changes in medicine. Changes in careers and feel like I've made solid progress. Back to my fuck up. I see her profile and notice the most recent post was really highly liked. 3k plus. And even given an award. Cool. Then I read it. I won't go into specifics because some degenerate will track the post down but needless to say it paints me very negatively. She describes me with very harsh language and this was all brought on by a fight we had that I will admit was not my finest moment. I get upset after reading the first couple of lines and give up close out of the browser and prepped for my presentation. Later that night my wife notices that I'm upset and asks me what is wrong. I try to avoid the confrontation because we had been doing so well but she persists and I break down. I tell her that I saw her post and that I was sorry. I had no right to look at her account. I told her I wasn't angry at her for making the post but it did really hurt and killed any self-confidence I had left. In a credit to our couple's therapy we talked it out like adults and she even read me the post in full and said that was it. We make up and all is well not good but at least okay. As I'm laying in there in bed something is nagging at me. Something about the way she kept saying that was it made me feel like she was hiding something in. Lying to me. So I get up and go to the living room and fuck up again by looking her post up and finding her account. I read for hours. She only had one other post about me but it was fairly generic deadbeat husbands asks me to make breakfast on my morning off. I'm working on not doing shit like that now sorry honey. Then I look at her comments. I get why she lied and said the one post was it. She was protecting my feelings. She hates me. She doesn't think counseling will work. She's just biding her time to kick me out. I am an awful human being with no redeeming qualities. She doesn't enjoy our sex life and feels like it ranges from a forced chore to pathetic and boring. I plan to talk to her about it. I know I am the asshole in this for reading her shit. This is the love of my life and mother of my children. I have destroyed everything good in my life. It's over. I have no chance to save it. TLDR. Borrowed my wife's laptop and found her Reddit account. She hates me. You are in couples counseling. And you are in counseling for depression. Don't turn to internet strangers for half-baked advice. Talk to the professionals and let them do the job you are paying them good money to do. Now what happens when she reads this post? Wait. You were hoping to find your wife's nudes uploaded to Reddit? Not quite the same as you. But I came across this Quora post that may help you. I went through a similar thing as the Quora chap. Here's what he wrote. And I'll put a link into it. When I first got married. We would be passionate everywhere. If you know what I mean. Bed. Floor. Couch. Wherever. We would do things for each other and we enjoyed each other's company. She was from Japan I am white American. 
I learned to speak Japanese and we lived in Japan a few years and life was good. We had kids together. But over the years things grew cold between us. They say that people change and you grow apart. I don't think either of us changed. I doubt that most people change. What I suspected happened was that I would base my love on how much she loved me and visa versa. If she did something nice for me, I would do something nice for her. Or if I did something nice for her, she would do something nice for me. That all sounds fine and dandy. But I think in practice, it doesn't work. When I do something nice for her, I expect something of equal niceness in return. However, often is the case that you don't perceive what is done in return is as valuable as what you gave him or her. So the next time you do something, you feel less inclined to do something as nice. And so the love kind of fizzles. You basically stop caring because you perceive your partner is not caring. And chances are your partner feels the same way about you. Neither person has changed. They are both the same person. But the love isn't there anymore. They let it spiral into nothingness. That is what my wife and I did. After 20 some odd years of marriage. There was nothing. I really had no desire to do anything for my wife. Because she wasn't going to do anything for me. We didn't hate each other. We helped each other when needed. But that is about all. I was unhappy with the marriage. I either wanted out or I wanted it fixed. But after 20 years of marriage, I knew that she wasn't going to try and fix the marriage. I knew that she thought I would not change so why should she have to do anything special and if I did change, it would only be temporary and things would go back to how they were. So why even try? I knew this would be her mindset. So I had three options. Divorce. Stay in the lifeless. Sexless marriage. Or take a chance and do something about it. I thought perhaps divorce would be the better way. Start anew. She had given up on me and didn't care. But I decided to give it a try anyway. I completely revamped my approach. I decided that I would try for one year to fix this. I would not require her to do anything. I would just do these things on my own. If these things wooed her back then she would be back on her own terms and not mine. So I did the following. I committed to get into shape. Better diet. Exercise I committed to do something special for her every day regardless of whether we were getting along or not. I committed to do at least an additional 30 minutes of housework every day. I committed to pay her a sincere compliment at least once per day, I committed not to fight with her, and to only have calm arguments with her, I decided to fix her dinner and breakfast as often as possible, in essence I decided to love her every day, as I thought, I got essentially no response from her day after day, I mean she would sometimes say thank you, but that was about it, after about 4 months she started to change, I kept at it. She continued to change. Okay. She didn't change. She was the same person. But she saw that I was trying. She saw that she was important to me. She saw that I wasn't giving up. She wanted to be loved. She started doing things for me again. We started talking a lot more and doing a lot more together. We started dating again and going on trips. It was almost like we were newlyweds again but with less passion. But it felt great. Sometimes I would just hold her in my arms for 30 minutes. Love can be revived. It is not easy. True love takes work. Making the decision above to love her regardless was the second best decision of my life. The first of course was to marry her. Our marriage is not perfect. But I look forward to seeing her every day. She is an awesome woman. She is basically the same person I married. We just let our love die. We were lazy lovers. She asked me one day what got into me and I talked with her about my plan. I think it was a pretty good plan and so did she. And yes, we are still married, but much more happily now. I knew our love couldn't be one-sided. But I also knew it needed to start somewhere and why not me? Ask yourself.
Why not you? Do you want the love back? What kind of sacrifice are you willing to make to have the love back? If I had decided that she needed to do something while I was doing something, then we would have been right back to where we started. You can't base your actions on what the other is doing in return. You need to commit to love regardless of what is done in return. That is the sacrifice and that is where real love will begin. Up, you can still sort this out. HTTPS www.quora.com slash what dash cause dash you dash to dash fall dash out dash of dash love dash with dash your dash past dash lover slash answers slash 100414629 ch equals 17 and oid equals 100,414,629 and share equals 51F73DF4 and Shreed equals UEFXG and target type equals answer. Man these TIFUS have started going from funny shit to just severely depressing shit recently. On one hand, don't underestimate the catharsis of being very cruel about someone behind their back. Without identifying details. In a medium you assume will never get back to them. It's a vent. A way to let go of pent up rage. It is possible that venting online is the way she deals with her frustration towards you. Giving her the patience and calm to actually deal with you in real life. On the other hand. You may have to ask yourself some real questions about your life, your finances, and how you're gonna go at it on your own. I'd say, get your shit together in preparation for when, if she kicks you out. You may, in the process, become a better person who has some kind of plan for their life and a handle on their mental health. And who knows, that may actually regain her respect. But don't do it for her. Leaving or staying is her choice. And this kind of sustained disrespect for your person would be hard to heal from in the best of circumstances. Do it because the person you are now is clearly not someone you want to be. There are two possibilities here. Up. Either she really hates you. And at least now you know. Or she was just blowing off steam to relieve what you yourself admit is the considerable stress she's been under. Either way, you both might want to skip Reddit and make an emergency appointment with your couple's counselor. You don't know for a fact that your marriage is over. And even if it is, your life is not. But you're not gonna find out here. Just like your wife isn't, wasn't likely to find expert advice on Reddit. Neither are you. Some people here are saying your relationship is over but they can't honestly know that. You mentioned you're going into counseling. Is this together with your wife? You also mentioned she wouldn't want to do couple counseling. Are these her words? If they are, I would still try to talk about it to her. If she really doesn't want to, then at least you can have a honest conversation about it. Otherwise, it reads like it would do you both good. If you can find a good eft, emotional focused therapy, therapist near you. That could be a good start for you both. Good luck. I know it worth nothing but I'm so sorry to hear that. I sincerely can only imagine how dark your world would turn after finding out. Especially after overcoming harsh situations and believing everything was okay. Bad interactions with a spouse isn't permanent. Have good communication and ensure that she really understands you are trying to change and that a lot of that has to do with your love for her. Talk to her about what she's feeling and try not to take everything too personally. Her feelings may be brought on by good reasons but it doesn't mean you have to have yourself. Confidence shattered. Feeling sorry about your actions doesn't mean you have to feel sorry for yourself or shit on yourself. Everything emotional here is fixable. You need to communicate, frequently, your feelings in kind ways. And ask her to do the same. It seems like you have trouble communicating because of your lack of self-worth and self-concept. Work to not give in to the void so much. Buddy, I'm sure therapy can help that.
But you need to be choosing to be positive as well and not be feeding negative thought processes. A lot of this post is desperately feeding negative self-beliefs. It got worse as you went on. Your life is not shattered. There are just some changes that need to be made on both sides. And you both need to talk about what you need and why without insulting each other. P.S. A bad sex life can change too. Fucking communicate. Edit. See a lot of people on here saying just cut and run. There's no coming back from this or that you're not the kind of person that should be in a relationship. I'm not intimately aware of your situation but in most situations I would say that is bad advice. And deeply unemotive. A partner can seriously help you work through personal issues and keep you accountable to goals. Depression is fed by loneliness, the void. You just need to do work for your relationship with your wife to be one in which you can both grow. This is possible. What husband thinks, oh dear I hope my wife posted nudes on the internet. If you're already an individual and couples therapy, you already know this is a conversation that's best moderated by a therapist between you and your wife. But based on the information you provided, I feel like you need a reminder that progression isn't a straight line and there's no cure. It doesn't mean you can't have a good life. It just means it takes a lot of work to maintain it. I relate to this so hard because I know the frustration of feeling like you can't control your own emotions and snap out of it even as it negatively affects your relationships and friendships. And when you're in this state of mind it can be so easy to focus on holding on to what you think. Are the things keeping you grounded? Your wife and kids? To the point where you idealize them? Don't forget that you are your own person. Outside of your family, you have value in this world. And depression is not the only thing that defines who you are. I'm not married but I know marriage takes work and there will be ups and downs. But both of you have to decide if you want to continue to work through it. Love is not enough. As hard as it is to think of others when your own feelings are so low. You have to remain present and active with your family. Do new things together so you'll have new things to talk about. Go on weekly date nights. Do the chores your wife normally does instead. The first step is the hardest. But if you can take that one step, you can eventually take another. And then another. I live by, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And it's something I think of. Often every time I feel as though everything is shit and I can't go on. If I could just wiggle my toe and get moving. I can live another day. Hey man. If she was protecting your feelings she doesn't hate you. She might have a lot of anger and resentment built up towards you. And her thinking that counseling won't work is probably more about her wanting to protect herself. From getting her hopes up and being disappointed. Also, you looked into her private comments that she probably uses to help vent and deal with her feelings. Sometimes we say things out of anger because it's cathartic and not because it's fully reflective of our actual feelings. You need to talk to her, like an adult, not with accusations or anger but just to get to the root of what's wrong with your marriage. And prepare yourself for the reality that it may take her a while to be able to see you in a more positive light again, even if you do everything right from here on out. There's also the possibility she may never be able to fully see you that way again. But you'd be surprised what a marriage can come back from. Don't spin out. Don't fall apart. Keep going to counseling and therapy and doing what you need to do to be a better partner to her. And most of all communicate with her and really try to hear what she's saying. I'm going through something similar with my girlfriend, shit. I guess technically my ex right now. Fuck. That hurt a little to realize. It's all pretty new and still evolving. But all I can tell you is not to give up. And it may take time. The trouble with being a shitty partner for years is it really kills any love or romantic feelings. For the other person, 
My ex-husband treated me like shit and basically thought I wasn't ever going to leave. His attitude killed any love I may have had for him. By the time he realized it was far too late. Bad treatment builds up and never really leaves the affected person. You can fix it early on but the longer it happens it's slowly eroded the relationship and there's no going back. I'm an absolute nobody that lurks 99.9% .9 of the time. But I feel the need to write this to you. I want to share with you a similar experience. I was happily married and madly in love to the woman of my dreams we both had great careers in our fields. Had wonderful relationships within our community. And just bought a wonderful home. We of course had our ups and downs. But I always respected her and was so very proud to be the man at her side. We each have our own flaws of course. But you overlook those minor things for someone you care so deeply for. Within our first two months of living in the home. I could feel things were off. My wife seemed. Distant? I went out of my way to tell her how incredible she was in my life. She smiled and thanked me. But it didn't feel genuine? When you've been with someone nearly a decade straight. You know when something isn't right. Continued being cautious of my wife's emotions for the next couple weeks until I discovered. Something. At the time I couldn't comprehend what I was reading. The thing is. My wife isn't a Redditor. I didn't discover some post online. Her emails. Or go snooping through her phone. I found a hidden diary with pages upon pages upon pages of how much my wife hated me. She wrote so many specific details about me that shocked me to my core. It was as if I was living one reality. And hers was an absolute nightmare. Literally describing every me as a worthless human being. And she couldn't handle it anymore. To add even further insult to my self-esteem. There were many entries describing her longing for her co-worker. She had been secretly talking to him for over two years. And yearned to be with this man. How she was much more sexually compatible. Desired him. And loved seeing him every day of the week. Those words are seared into my soul. It took hours to read everything. I decided what would be best was to do exactly as you posted above up. I confronted her, apologized, and said I'd do my best to change for her. In that moment, a light switched on for her. She realized she was finally free. The words she had wanted to say to me for years were finally out in the open. She had a nuclear meltdown. And I honestly can say that wasn't my wife that was screaming. Just some person I didn't know but was in love with. She left two days later. And is still with this man. They quit their jobs and traveled the country together. I've been alone since. It's been one year since. Don't be scared to move forward alone. You'll find strength in yourself you never knew. I'm sorry about everything that has happened to you. You have a few choices to make that are not easy. Good luck. Internet stranger. You were casually expecting to find her wife posting nudes on her Reddit account? And er alright with that? Okay. Fuick. Rule number one. If you go looking for something, you'll probably find it. Hey. I'm an internet stranger. But I can only share my anecdotal experience. I have not gone through what you're experiencing from the it being on the internet side of things. But in a similar way I've gone through it from word of mouth. I was dating a girl that was the love of my life. For almost a decade, mental health and putting myself down ended up with me burning out at a job that literally had. Nowhere up for me to go anymore and I wasn't even earning what I was giving that company. She literally bottled it in. And tried to comfort and support me and help me change meds or make doctor's appointments and it got dark for us both. She went from a partner to my caretaker. And I just shut things out and worked to make money as if that's all the value I could provide was. There was a few other things. But nothing major or of consequence. One day, she came to me and she broke down and said she loved me but couldn't do it. 
She wanted to break up. Something in my head clicked. I knew I couldn't lose her. But it had already happened and I recognized how hard it was for her to do that. I comforted her in it. With a strength I didn't know I had because I could barely be my own person. I told her I understood and I supported her decision. I moved out a bit later. And left my job. Moved back to my parents. Typical, ah, shit. I'm a loser, story. I have a couple close friends that are close to her and I know she didn't tell everyone. But she needed to vent to a couple people and it was hard to talk to them when they knew her side. And I didn't know what she had said. I didn't beg for her back. Didn't ask them to tell me anything other than if it was okay. Please let me know she's okay. Fast forward. I started really figuring my own shit out. I got new doctors. New meds and I was more cautious about that stuff. Changed careers. And we met up as friends a couple times in the process. It took owning up to it. Willing to do better. And actually doing better and we eventually did reconnect and have been together since. Life throws shit at you sometimes. And we've had some worse shit happen since but we're stronger than ever because we face those things together now and instead of fighting each other we fight problems. It's not going to be the same for everyone. But sometimes a break to look at yourself in the mirror and work to do better is the best you can do. I hope things work out for you. No matter what happens. Hi op, I'm in your wife's position RN. Hear me out here. It's rough. It's really 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 rough being partner to someone with severe mental health issues. It strains you every moment of every day. You lose sleep. You're constantly walking on eggshells. And you're always stressed out. I hate my boyfriend sometimes. I catch myself daydreaming sometimes about being single. About having a different partner. Etc. I write these thoughts in a journal and we have an explicit agreement that this is my dark place. He doesn't see what's in it because it's where I put my most angry, vile, and pissed thoughts and feelings. I think Reddit may be your wife's journal. That's not great, as it's public, but I can understand it. Talk honestly with her about this. Ask how often she feels like she wants to leave you. Is it every now and then or is it constant? Because we have moments of weakness as caretakers. We get pissed and hateful sometimes. But we try our best to take it out of us in ways that won't hurt anyone. If she's really serious about leaving. It's okay. It's going to be rough as hell. But not everyone is cut out to be in a relationship with someone that is working on themselves. If it does happen use the time to work on yourself and let your treatments help you. Maybe one day you guys can rekindle. Mercy. Stop reading and stop reading into shit. Everyone vents. Especially when mad or frustrated. That's the entire point of Reddit. Doesn't mean she doesn't love you. She just didn't love you in that moment. Sounds like you admit you were pretty awful. Isn't it better if she vents rather than stews and blows up on you? Violating her trust isn't going to help anyone. And she is allowed to have her feelings and private thoughts and to make them public if she wants. Confronting her on it is not going to be helpful. Neither is going behind her back reading. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epicaracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.